This is Talking Drupal, a bi-weekly chat about web design and development by a group of guys with one thing in common, we love Drupal. Recorded live on Wednesday afternoons in a Google Hangout, visit us at TalkingDrupal.com. This is episode 120, Thursday, May 19th, 2016, DrupalCon North America. Welcome, guys. Good, Good evening. Oh, yes, uh, so we're recording a day late, uh, Thursday yeah, evening. Dollar short or not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And joining us as usual is John Pacozzi from Oomph. Welcome, John. Good evening. And uh, today's show is going to be focused around your trip last week to New Orleans. Uh, yes, it was a lovely time down in the Big Easy. Um, had some awesome experiences with local local food and, and uh, taking in the sites. So uh, I can't wait to sh wait to share all that with you guys. Great. And uh, John, John's brought his smooth jazz voice back. Uh, yeah, I'm say, John, you sound a little soft. Maybe you could speak up a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, my kid's sleeping, so I'm trying to be quiet. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so maybe you can turn something up then. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix it on my end. Turn um, the game. So our listeners could hear you as well. <laughs> uh, the smooth jazz voice isn't working for you guys? Not really. Um, it's creeping us out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Nick Laughlin from Enlightened Development, hey Nick. How are you doing? I'm uh, I'm always intrigued to do a uh, recap uh, episodes. I think it's good to kind of get an idea of what's new, what's coming up. And I was able to, while I wasn't able to attend, I was able to listen to a few few different uh, talks and keynotes that went on. So I think uh, a lot of great, good things came out of it this year. Well, why don't, why don't we jump right in um, to, to talk about um, the highlights from last week. John, what, what would you say uh, stuck out at you as some of your, uh, uh, before we get into maybe some of the details of Dries' notes and Dries' note and stuff, um, what, what jumps out at you from the week, you know, reflecting a few days later after returning? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say um, all the keynotes, all the keynotes were really awesome. Uh, the Dries note has, was jam-packed full of information and new initiatives, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and the keynotes on the second and third day were um, just as good. They weren't Drupal focused per se, but they were, um, the second day was uh, user, user focused and thinking about your users. And then the third day was more um, developer focused uh, and not so much from the standpoint of us thinking of our developers, but of us thinking about ourselves and how we take care of ourselves. So I would say all the keynotes were really, really interesting, uh, as well as uh, quite a few sessions. There were um, a number of sessions that uh, were really um, kind of grabbed me and, and, and one of which was um, a session about um, becoming uh, the transitioning from a developer to a Drupal architect. Uh, I thought that talk was really interesting and we'll, we'll again we'll talk about it more in a little bit but uh, there was also some great talks about translation and uh, Drupal commerce um, uh, 2x for Drupal 8. So all of those things were really, really interesting as well. Hey, John, all, all the, so um, not all, but I would say the last three years at DrupalCon, at all of them, there has been this focus on, you know, when is Drupal 8 coming? Um, when is Drupal 8 going to be here? We're behind and this kind of stuff. So with that sort of monkey off the Drupal back, was there a different feeling around Drupal 8? Uh, I think I think now there's a different different monkey, <laughs> okay. um, a a smaller, cuter monkey maybe. Um, yeah. Kind of uh, the the vibe now was not so much when's Drupal eight coming, but now oh my god it's here. How do I how do I work with it? How do I build with it? How do yeah. I optimize it? How do I use CMI? How do I use uh, a lot of the new features that are in it? Um, there was actually a talk about big pipe. Um, that I, I didn't attend, but uh, Rob Aubin uh, from Oomph did, and uh, he said it was great. He said it was really informative. So, uh, you know, the focus has shifted. Uh, it's shifted from 
you know, oh, when's Drupal 8 coming to? Drupal 8's here. How do we how do we get into it? How do we use it? And how do we make the best websites possible? Yeah, and I think one of the interesting things that came up during DrupalCon was that um, even though Drupal 8's here, it doesn't feel like the adoption is there yet. Um, but one of the things brought up was that the adoption has been faster than Drupal 7. Yeah, um, so that those are some of the stats from the Dries note that I thought were really interesting. You know, Drupal 8's being adopted faster than Drupal 7 was. Um, Drupal 7 adoption is it has gone down, so people are just jumping right into 8. They're not even really looking at 7. And um, there were 3,300 people that contributed to Drupal 8, which I thought was a huge number um, and was awesome. So I, I, I think, I, I guess one of the questions for me is, do you think that's true adoption, or do you think that's people just downloading it, installing it, trying it out, and then leaving it up? Um because I still get the impression that there's still somewhat of a gap. You know, there's more Drupal users, so of course there's more people that are going to be trying out to see what's there. Well, uh, I, will, I will say on the adoption front, I know um, Oomph has tried to take an approach of working with Drupal 8 first. So any new projects that we're, we're working on, we're going to try to build in Drupal 8. Um, there's even been, you know, talk around the office to say um you know we're not even gonna we're not even gonna spec out drupal 7 unless there's some really hard requirement that that requires it um so we're we're really you know we're looking at drupal 8 we're building drupal 8 sites and we're we're jumping into it um with both feet so i think you know adoption's probably up but i think you're probably right nick that there are um you know, there are people that are trying it and just kind of, you know, messing around with it. And, and that's why the adoption is, is maybe a little bit higher. So um, let, let's talk about the keynote from Dries um, first here. Um, what, what are the highlights from that, John? And in, in that, that, in that keynote and all the other keynotes are available online already. Yeah, uh, that's that's without saying anything we talk about in the show is going to be available. Video is going to be online um, on the uh, conference website, so you can definitely watch them after after you listen to us and um, you know see if you agree, see if you don't. Um, but yeah, they're all available, which is awesome. Uh, so the Dries note was kind of broken up into an update on Drupal eight market perspective results from the survey that that goes out every year and then uh, initiatives um for drupal 8 to enhance enhance drupal 8 so uh we went through the updates a little bit on drupal 8 uh, as far as adoption uh the other update i have here is actually that drupal 8 1 was released on time so that means that the deployment schedule that they're or the release schedule that they're following is actually working um working really well so 8.1 released it actually had new features such as big uh big pipe so um things things are looking up in that in that regard uh drees went into some market perspective he talked about companies like um tesla pfizer uh the weather channel cisco nike all using drupal um and actually even talking um, about Tesla using uh, Drupal to power some of their in-car systems and um, oh, uh, Lufthansa using it um, to power some of their in-flight systems. Mm -hmm. So Drupal kind of in, in places where you wouldn't exactly expect Drupal to be. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and then we got to the initiatives, which uh, was a really interesting part of the Dries note. Um, and these initiatives were things that I kind of viewed it as things we can look forward to seeing in, in future versions of Drupal. Um, so there were um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Uh, they were the media initiative, the workflow initiative, the migrate initiative, which actually is already active, um, the blocks and layouts initiative, the data modeling tools initiative, API first initiative, and then the theme component library. And I, I think it's important to mention that these initiatives didn't really come out of thin air. Um, there was a fairly massive survey that Trees put out um, that people responded to, and people responded. You know, they were authors, site builders, developers, themers, users, end users. You know, anybody that 
has any stake in Drupal uh, responded. And they broke up how these initiatives, the type of initiative based on the survey results. And I have to say, you know, this data-driven approach to building these initiatives, I think, is spot on. I mean, every single one of these initiatives, except for maybe one or two, um, were really, personally, looking at Drupal, the things that really, really stood out as needing major help in Drupal to, to move forward. And the other ones, the one or two that didn't really stand out, I could easily see how they were major pain points for other types of users. So, I mean, anybody that uses Drupal knows that the media um, media management is, while much improved over older versions, is still fairly, um, fairly difficult to match all the needs of any, any complex or enterprise client. Um, and just the fact that the media module has been around for, what, four years now and hasn't been, been able to solve it kind of just speaks to how difficult of a problem it is uh, to solve. So even, you know, just the fact that the, uh, the top-level initiatives kind of spot on hit stuff really is encouraging. And I think it's interesting to talk about a little bit about what the initiatives are. So like the media initiative isn't just about better management of images and videos and things. It's about um, kind of the end-to-end -end management of media. So one of the possibilities that Tree showed was kind of like a, the ability to kind of drag an image from a media library into content and have it kind of just be placed automatically, which would be... Um, you know, which is kind of like a Squarespace type or Wix type thing or Dreamweaver type thing and would really enhance the authoring experience. Yeah, I would actually recommend, again, watching the video because some of the um, kind of the mock-ups that he did uh, to kind of illustrate these points um, were really interesting. Uh, what what of the initiatives that we have listed here, um, the ones we've already mentioned, what, what John, st stood out at you as as um, I wouldn't say the most important one, but the most interesting one uh, uh, that Drees was highlighting. That's a really great question. So looking at it, looking at it after the fact and looking at all of them. Like I, uh, I look at this list and I'm, not, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's nothing there that surprises me, right? <laughs> right. So so what I think was was interesting were, was um, obviously media. Uh, Nick, Nick did a great job of describing how important media is um, and how much we need like a really good media solution. Um, I'm also finding that workflow is something that, that – I'm adding to a lot of sites on, on a pretty regular basis. So having that built into core would be very useful. I think, I think for me, for the help of the project though, I think all of them are really important, but I think there's one that stands out to me as probably the most important for the future adoption of Drupal. Um, one of the reasons why Drupal has got gained in popularity is that it, it really kind of, Changed the game when it came to like data modeling and data viewing and that kind of stuff. And I think uh, the next thing really is the API first um, initiative. The ability for, and we'll talk a little bit later about a demo um, that just blew my mind in the uh, in the right. keynote. But the API first is kind of the ability for anything happening on the Drupal site to be interacted with through a fairly standard API. Yeah, that was, that was going to be my my second slash third choice. There was definitely the API first, and you know, uh, I don't want to spoil I don't want to spoil the demo for anybody. But the demo that he did was very um, very interesting, and the fact that it was powered by a Drupal backend using um, you know using using third party tools or, or third party interactions was very cool. So. Why don't you explain what the API first initiative is in a little bit more detail? So it's it's basically uh, the way I understood it was better in interoperability between Drupal and and APIs, um, and and basically allowing Drupal to be the back end of um, a service um, similar to. Uh, 
So I'll just explain the demo that he did. So that, that's the kind of the best way to, uh, to illustrate. Um, he had built a plugin for Alexa that um, was basically, he was asking Alexa a question and Alexa was communicating with the Drupal website to query the database for that information. Um, and um, specifically it was for a, uh, um, uh, an item catalog and um, he was asking about the stock of of said item uh, so Alexa was giving him back and the you know feedback oh that items out of stock you want me to set a reminder when it's available yes I do okay great and then you would see that oh the products available Alexa would send send him a text message I think I think it was no it was a push, it was a push notification um, oh, okay. And for those unaware, Alexa is uh, an assistant that's part of the Amazon Echo. Uh, it's a home automation hub. It's a way to communicate with Amazon. So mm -hmm. essentially, he would just say, Alexa, you know, what's on sale this week? It would query the Drupal database and come back and say, you know, your local, such an, I think it was Gourmet Foods Market has a sale this week on apples and oranges, whatever. And then to John's second example, he would say, hey, do you have, is there a sale on um, some kind of sauce? And it went back and said, no, there is no sale. Do you want to be reminded or do you want to be notified of what it is? And he said, yes. Come on, Nick. It was awesome sauce. It was awesome sauce. Um, and then uh, somebody on the Drupal side, you know, marked that item as being on sale. And he received a push notification on his phone saying, hey, awesome sauce is now on sale. Would you like to purchase it? And then he was able to just click purchase from the notification, and the item was purchased and sent to him. So, so this sounds a whole lot like the Google I/O <laughs> keynote I yeah. I saw yesterday uh, with with some of this stuff. So, which pieces of this are are important for the API, the Drupal API? Which which piece of that was Drupal, and and which pieces so, of that were or API things? So the API part was anything to do with a stock or interacting with um, with purchasing or content of the, the Drupal site. Um, the power of the API is that you don't necessarily need to know how Alexa works or Google announced, as Stephen just mentioned, Google just had their, is having their major convention uh, conference this year. And they announced that they're coming out with Google Home, which is a competitor to Amazon Echo. So the Google Home developer could develop an app that reacts in the same way as the Echo. And the Drupal site doesn't need to know that. They're just receiving a request for stock and then sending out an answer. Um, and then, you know, the Google uh, Home can kind of interact with everything else around the house to kind of manage those notifications. So it's just a, a central repository for information, and the API is connecting to third-party services. So so we can connect to third-party services now. I mean, we all do it in the apps that we write. So what about this initiative is special or different? Um, I think the big thing is that everything in Drupal top-down is going to be connected to the API. Um, right now, it's kind of difficult to sometimes perform actions. Um, if permissioning is difficult, um, secondary authentications are difficult. So, for example, um, having a user login is easy, but having restricting access to a particular app is somewhat difficult. So, if you had an API where you want um, you want to authorize only specific, you know, Android apps to be able to access your information, there's no real way to no easy way to do that in Drupal, and I think that these APIs will allow it, you know, to have secondary authentication. Yeah, you know, uh, Drew's also talked about a, uh, developing an SDK for for this kind of um, for 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 Drupal. I assume that's what he was referring to, um, and just basically um, having the REST modules in core, um, and as Nick said, better integrated into Drupal core. So I think, you know, those two pieces are going to be really powerful for app developers to be able to start using Drupal more widely as a, as a backend um, management framework for their, you know, for their information delivery to their apps. Um, and I think that's really the big, the big takeaway there is that, you know, 
right now we can we do have uh, the ability to do you know some rest sir have rest services and, and things like that in drupal but um i think ingraining those more into core and, and having an sdk to be able to work with is definitely going to be uh is definitely going to be beneficial hmm. so what um are there any other keynotes that john that jumped out at you um did, uh, did you see them all I did see them all. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any is there any other one that jumped out at you that was interesting that I mean, you'd recommend they, people watching? They were all interesting. I would actually recommend watching all of them. Um, you know, they were they were interesting on uh, different levels. So the second day keynote, um, again, was uh, it, it was about um, thinking about how your users interact with your website. Um, and questions that you would ask on a form and how people may perceive those questions or things you may do on your website that, um, that, uh, you know, may, may have adverse effects on people. So one of the, um, one of the examples that Sarah gave was, um, she was talking about she, her and Eric Meyer have written a book and um, I'm sure everybody that's on the internet knows that, um, you know, Eric Meyer's daughter uh, died uh, last year or maybe it was two years ago now. Um, but one of the examples she gave was Facebook had like this year in review feature and the year in review feature was showing Eric pictures of his his daughter, and it had um, her her face in a circle, and then around it there were people with like balloons, and they were like you know happy and partying, and and you know, and she said, well, you know, Facebook really missed the mark on that because to Eric that wasn't a time to celebrate and to to party and and be you know be overly happy. Um, so it, it talked about that and, and kind of thinking about you know the decisions that we're making on our on our sites and when we're developing um, these things to to make sure you're thinking of 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 the audience and the whole person and and that sort of thing. Um, so that was really interesting. And then the third day was actually a community keynote. So um, the Drupal community actually voted um, to have this person come and deliver a keynote. And uh, the title of the keynote was something to the effect of um, your brain is more important than your standing desk, something, something to that effect. And it was basically talking about how taking care of yourself, um, both mentally, physically, um, is, is going to guide, uh, guide you to being better at your job and being better, a uh, better developer and, and that sort of thing. And, and how that's, that's more important than, you know, say the next deadline or say the, you know, finishing the pro this, this ma massive project. So it was really interesting to watch. Mm, interesting. John, do you know if the sessions were recorded? Yeah, all of the sessions are available as well. They're all available video, audio, both. So it's going to be audio um, with the video being of the presenter slides. Yep. Excellent. So this kind of like for, for the people like myself and Nick who weren't able to attend, the, all the content is there. I mean, you're missing the networking and some of the the good time of being there, but the, the beef of the content is all available to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, is, that is definitely true. That's great, um, yeah. You know, I always recommend going because it's an experience like no other. But uh, you know, if you can't you can't attend, you can definitely get um, the information out of it. So, what what would you say was your your one of your highlights in terms of sessions you attended? I would say out of the ones that I've listed here, um, there are probably three or four of them that I would say were like my top favorite sessions, ones that I'll probably watch again or, or reference in some way, shape or form. Um, the path to becoming an accidental architect was really, uh, really interesting. Um, it talked about the path from being a developer um, 
to becoming a Drupal architect and the differences in those roles and um, how you can make that migration if you haven't already or it also helped you determine whether you already had made that migration. Um, and it also it also talked about um, kind of things you can do to help you make that migration. So if you were um, thinking about making that migration and, and you didn't really know how or what the best the best way to go about it was, um, that would give you kind of the insight as to how to do it. Uh, one thing that came out of that was uh, the recommendation to um, be creative daily. Um, it keeps keeps your your creative you know your cre the creative part of your brain moving and and doing things. And um, it was just really interesting uh, to hear that talk and see that there's like there there's something after like being a Drupal developer. As far as other talks, I really gravitated towards the um, translation and commerce talks. Um, if you've listened to the show, obviously you know that um, uh, I, I do a lot of commerce projects. I do a lot of translation projects. So hearing um, how easy translation is now in Drupal 8, uh, there's actually a great talk called Multilingual Makeover a side-by-side -side comparison of Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 um, that was really interesting because it actually went through how many modules you needed in Drupal 7 versus Drupal 8 to, to get a, a site multilingual. It also right. talked about features. Um, so the biggest, one of my big takeaways from that was um, in Drupal 7, you had to touch every single content type that you wanted to translate, which is a huge pain. In Drupal 8, they've standardized that to like one page where you can go through this one page that has kind of like the accordion style um, uh, views on it, uh, where you can like open one up, select the fields you want to translate, close it, open the mm -hmm. next one, go through and then hit save and that's it. It's saved. It's done. You don't have to do it in a bunch of different content types. Um, so that was really cool. The other cool thing was uh, commerce. Like I said in the beginning of the show, um, there was a talk from uh, the commerce guys, um, and uh, they were talking about Commerce 2x, which is going to be for Drupal 8, and how they're taking kind of a different approach to um, commerce this time around. Um, they learned a lot from Commerce 1, and they're improving Commerce 2, but they're also using... Um, they're developing PHP libraries to be widely used by other communities to try to help build commerce and make commerce better and get people from outside the Drupal community to help do that. Hmm. Um, so that was really interesting, but it was also interesting to see the new features that they had in, um, in commerce too. Um, one of the notables from that was that you can now have uh, one install of commerce with multiple stores. Hmm. So you could have, um, you have the ability to essentially set up one commerce instance and run multiple stores off of it could be useful um for like multinational a multinational company you know you need a store for the uk you need a store for us you need a store for india you could do um, that all from one commerce install is it on the same drupal site or can it be separate drupal sites no it's the same drupal site okay. so it's one site different stores which okay. I mean, that makes when you, sense. When you think about it, it's actually it's actually awesome because, you know, one of my major projects right now is maintaining a multi-site and we're actually switching to a whole commerce solution. And, you know, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about going back and, and talking to the client about like dialing it back, doing it in Drupal 8 and, and saying, OK, well, you know, we can build this store. All your countries can have its own, their own store and they can all have their own unique checkout experiences and all, all unique products and so on and so forth. The other big thing about commerce, um, and I probably should have let off with this because this, if, if you've ever done commerce, you'll know that this is going to be like a game changer, is the fact that they're doing away with the store product and product display. Um, <laughs> the most confusing piece of commerce. <laughs> Well, yeah. so yes and no. I mean, it makes sense to me, but I've been doing commerce. Yeah, for a I know. While. Once you do a few sites, you get it. But I mean, it's confusing out of the box. 
but now it brings it together into one one entity one content type mm -hmm. that that allows you to control all of that stuff from one place and you can actually do um variations on that same content type so if you said okay i have um you know a unh wildcats hat right and i have it in black i have it in blue i have it in like a beanie style you can add all that information right there and then on that on that page without mm -hmm. having to go into somewhere else and dealing with that um they're also uh, doing a lot with taxes as far as um, integrating tax tables for um, – so the way they put it is they're doing it in Europe because Europe's easy. Um, in the U.S., you would still need a service like Avalara um, in order to handle your, uh, your tax tables because the U.S. tax system is kind of crazy. So commerce was really exciting. Um, I would say those are probably my top, my top, three, um, top three talks – from uh, the week. Yeah, I have to say, I was able to listen to the accidental architect talk, and I, I just, I just found it fascinating how similar his story. I mean, names were changed, companies were changed, but it's pretty, pretty interesting to see that other people had the same path. And uh, you know, I, I think it was a pretty good talk. Pretty same path as as a lot of as myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and he had a lot of Lego in his uh, in his yeah. slideshows. So right. I thought it was a pretty good pretty good uh, pretty good time. And, and he was a really good speaker too. He was very entertaining, which which is always um, you know, if you've gone to a couple of Drupal cons, you know that the the speaker can really make or break the talk. Um, and and the talk was very entertaining. I was reading um, I was listening to somebody talk about how to give a good talk, and they were saying that you need three things. Let's see if I can remember them. You need a, a good presenter, a good presentation, and a good talk, a good topic. And presentation in that in this case is like slideshow, something to go off. Yeah. So good, a good topic, good, good presentation, is, and a good presenter. A good slide deck is definitely very, very, very necessary. John, what what other kind of highlights from the week do you have? Uh, stuff outside the sessions and the and the. Um, I know I know you're a diet to talk about the the best party. <laughs> the, the best party? Uh, no, I was I was gonna I was gonna forego the networking um, afterwards, but. Um, Let's put it this way. Rob and I were very busy every night after uh, after the sessions, and um, you know. Uh, our, uh, the, uh, let's see, the best party. I don't think there was a best party. It was just the party of the night. So uh, we went to uh, the Black Mesh party, which was which was fun. It was awesome. It was right on the Mississippi, um, which if you've never been down that way, very interesting to be able to see, um, you know, see boats up close and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, that was very cool. Um we went to uh, Pantheon. Pantheon had a great party. They basically, um, I don't even know what you would call it, music hall or, or club or what, what whatever it was called. They, they basically bought it out, had a band, uh, live music, very cool. Um, you know, hung out with uh, guys from Lingotech. They had a they had a party at a local bar um, where I had a delicious coffee porter. So that was that was nice. Um, I don't know that there was one that I liked over the other. They were all really good. They were all really fun. Um, and there's also trivia night. So trivia night was at the World War II Museum. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, uh, we answered trivia questions underneath a really, really large, actually multiple really, really large airplanes. Um, and that was very, very cool because um, who, who, uh, won? Actually, who won? Not me. I can tell you that. Um, what kind of trivia? Uh, Drupal trivia. Oh, Drupal trivia. Okay. So, um, well, it was a mix because there were some questions, uh, some general tech questions as well. But, um, yeah, so uh, I can say that I did not win, but I was not the worst team because they give a prize for that. So I was somewhere, <laughs> we were somewhere in the middle. All right. Uh, you couldn't even win at losing? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that's that's true. I could not. I guess I answered too many of the questions correctly, which is um, you know, that's a good thing. I guess that's a good thing. So, John, as um, as three guys who run a Drupal camp locally here, 
Um, did you come back with any ideas for our camp based on the conference? Oh man, I, I could tell you. Uh, so the Lingo Tech party, they actually had um, uh, guys cooking crawfish. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked one of the guys, you know, there were local guys, and I said, okay, guys, like, what's the deal with these things? Uh, you know, I'm from New England. I know shrimp. How do I eat one of these things? And I actually learned how to eat crawfish. And uh, it was really interesting. It is a uh, rather large crustacean, and you do not get a whole lot of meat out of that very large crustacean. Um, but they were very delicious. Uh, so... Um, the point is there, uh, you know, local, local food, local fare is always good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, again, it was kind of a theme going through, uh, the yeah, black sure. mesh, black mesh party had a bunch of local food, right. um, local beers, that sort of thing. So, yep. um, everywhere that we went, there was some sort of local, local dish, which was, which was, um, really nice because being at the conference all day, being at these events all night, um, we found time to to enjoy the local local flavor and the and some, see some of the sites. But um, you know, you, you kind of want to get that while you're while you're at these events as well. Sure. Wow, sounds like it was sounds like <laughs> sounds like it was a busy week and uh, and an uh, information filled week. Yeah. Um, I will also say beignets. If you've never had a beignet, you should you should try it out. I actually brought a box of uh, of of mix home and had them uh, Sunday morning with the family. It was great. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, anything else? Anything else we want to talk about from DrupalCon NA? Well, the big news, uh, you know, closing session every year, you find out that DrupalCon next year in North America will be in Baltimore. Baltimore. So, oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I expect to see all of you guys in Baltimore uh, next next year. Yeah, certainly a little closer to home. It's getting getting in the right neighborhood. Right, right. Uh, that's great. All right. So, John, thanks for thanks for that information. Uh, did you happen to run into any talking Drupal listeners? Oh man, I did. I actually uh, ran into about five people. Um, one person. So I'll tell this story real quick. I was actually sitting in a, a session, and right before the session started, I um, I was talking to Rob, and guy turns around and looks at me. And looks down at my name tag to see my name, and he look, he just goes, "Talking Drupal, you're you're on Talking Drupal." And I said, "I said, yeah, I am. Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for listening." And uh, I believe his name was uh, Kyle or Ryan. So Kyle or Ryan, <laughs> if you're listening, hi. Um, and he he was he was uh, one of. Uh, probably about a handful. I would say about five people that that right. you know. Um, knew me from from the show so right. always great to see see people down there that um watch the show listen to the show and uh you know it's funny i had that happen to me once i was at a drupal event and i was talking with some people and someone came up from behind me and says i know your voice <laughs> you know are you from talking drupal it was it was a funny experience <laughs> yeah, it has to happen. i think and i think rob from oomph did something like that at the first uh drupal camp i met him he goes I, I went up to him and said, I asked you to introduce me to him, I think, John. And he's like, you know who I am? I was like, I never met you before. And he goes, oh, wait, actually, I listen to the podcast, so I think because I know you, you should know me. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> like, uh, guess not, but thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always interesting to see uh... – you know, it's always interesting to meet people because, you know, I never really, I, I told Rob, I'm like, I never really think of it as like, you know, there are people out there and they're listening. And then the people that are listening come and see you at events. And, right, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. There's a little bit of a disconnect there for me. Um, sure. I love, I love talking to those people though. So I always find it interesting, but I never, I never really realize, I guess, that this goes out to the internet and that people are listening. Yeah, right. feel free to always come up and say hi uh, if you if you see us at an event. Yeah, so we uh, we were looking at our stats a few weeks ago and we're close to 150,000 downloads, right? It was a number like that. 
So someone's listening. Somebody, some <laughs> bot, <least> some, <laughs> some bot somewhere is downloading. Yeah, somebody's all downloading our, it, right? <laughs> all of our shows. That's right. It's probably the NSA. Right. Well, let's move on to our module of the week. So, module of the week we have this week is better formats. You guys ever used that before? Um, I, was, I was kind of surprised it wasn't in our um, in our list of uh, modules of the week. You know, for you listeners out there, you can always go to talkingdrupal.com, and we do have a page dedicated to our uh, modules of the week. Everyone that we've ever talked about is listed there uh, with a link to it. So that's what we use as our resource to figure out if we've talked about something before. But uh, better formats is a way to put um, text formats on a particular field and have some constraints with it. Uh, so if you have like a field in one content type that you want to have a particular text format defined, you can do it using better formats. Um, another nice feature of it is you can also restrict it by user for that particular field. So, so Steve, just out of curiosity, yeah. just to clarify that, so mm -hmm. if I had a text field and say that text field was only supposed to have like, I don't know, some JavaScript snippet in it, right? Mm -hmm. And I always wanted that text field set to my my script mm -hmm. format, mm -hmm. better formats would help me do that? It, that's exactly what it does. Oh, man. And the nice thing about it, too, is if you have one format it doesn't have that little drop down and stuff on it anymore so if you know that field is going to have your script type in it then you can just set it and that's all it's ever oh. going to go in there and cool. it's available for Drupal 8 it looks like uh, y yes I've used it in 7 haven't used it in 8 yet but it does have a version 8 out there I don't remember we could take a quick look at the link here it's I don't remember the status 7 and 8 are both not stable for production but there's 61,000 installs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so seven, could... 7 is a beta and 8 is a dev development right. version. Right. Which, Nick, when it, you should start your own initiative to get all of the like beta modules up <laughs> yeah, to he, full Yeah, he talked releases. about that in the past, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you remember, what, what was that called? I, I, I can, I can I'm look waiting. at it. I'm waiting. I'm you know, waiting it, for it that initiative. You know, it kills me because I just, I just downloaded feeds about three hours ago. And feeds is still sitting there in beta too. Well, yeah, they're not going to work on it until they finish feeds three, which yeah, I. But, but I, I mean, it's got one hundred and thirty thousand down, uh, you know, installs. I mean, at some point. Yeah. Well, it's things like, but it's things like organic groups hasn't really had a lot of work. But part, part of the problem is that it's, um, you know, it, it it's going to take a thousand hours of development yeah. to to upgrade. I mean, it's just not as simple. The real question, Steve, is did you use the beta version or did you use the development version because it's been updated more recently? No, I used the beta version. I used the uh, the beta version of... Um, oh, what are you talking about, feeds? Yes. Uh, I used the beta version. I will say that I think the development version... I'm not 100% sure, but I think the development version actually has a, a fix in it to um, allow you to delete content from a feed that only has one item in it. Uh, okay. I, I knew that that was an issue. I've actually applied a patch for that in the past. Okay. Yeah. But I, anyway. I was, I'm doing some simple CSV imports, and it worked like a charm, as it always does. Well, that's good. But it, sure. but it always makes me laugh when I go and look at these, uh, look at these versions. And yeah. see devs and betas and uh, it's just funny. Anyway, so let's next, move on. Next year's community keynote should be Nick talking about how we need to we need to start an initiative to prevent that. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So uh, hey, any listeners out there, you can email us at talkingdrupal at gmail dot com uh, with any comments, feedback. You, we don't mention this often, but you can always go to iTunes and give us a review too. Uh, we do see those uh, and appreciate them. And we also have a phone number that you could leave a voicemail at. It's 401-400-2004. Uh, also go to TalkingDrupal.com and leave a comment. Exactly, and we do get quite a few of those. And, and some that aren't spam. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess that's a wrap, guys. Anything else? Uh, not on this, but I think I'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah, we'll... Uh, 
We'll talk to everyone soon. And uh, so, John Pacozzi, where can people find you online? Oh, man, you can find me on all the major social networks and Drupal.org, uh, at John Pacozzi, and uh, always on at umfink.com. And how about you, Nick? You can find me online at N-I-C-X-V-A-N, Nick's fan, pretty much everywhere. Uh, and me, it's Stephen Cross on Twitter with a PH and at parallaxinfotech.com. Take care, guys. See you guys later. Have a good one. And I'm trying to find my window. Hang in there, everybody. <laughs> good my, night, my, uh, Internet listeners. Yes, the uh, the Hangout window has disappeared. Here we are. See you.